Hi, and welcome to How to Get Him Excited About You by Being Sexy. I'm Matthew Coast, and today I have Alana Pratt from alanapratt.com. That's spelled A-L-L-A-N-A-P-R-A-T-T.com. And Alana is an intimacy expert and the host of Intimate Conversations Live. And I'm really excited about having her on our interview today because I actually first heard about her a few years ago from an interview that she did with a dating expert in the men's dating space. And everything that she really has to say is a lot of fun and exciting and, and I know she's got a lot of really good insights for you. So. Thanks Thanks for being on the interview today, Alana. I'm grateful to be here, and a couple of things about you. You've got, like, the best radio voice, dude. It's really a nice voice. <laughs> and um, I'm curious, which guy did you hear me on in the male dating world? I think it was, it was David D'Angelo's interview, yeah. suit, one of his interview cool. series. And so, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that that's where I heard about you. Some men had said they listened to that interview like 12 times or something. It really like healed a part of their heart. And I hope that in all the things I can share, I can also share what it's like to be, you know, have a lot of male clients that I talk to, kind of like a man whisperer or something. Some inside scoop into how much men really want a profound, deep relationship with women. I think a lot of women think, oh, they're only after one thing. Um, but um, And maybe some guys are. But I'm just saying I know a lot of them that are great noble men who want to bring women great pleasure and I can help the ladies to invite that behavior out of the guys. Awesome. Yeah, and, and you know, just to give you a little bit of background and, and most people have have probably heard a little bit about my story by now if if they're watching this interview, but um I used to be a men's dating coach as well and it's 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 one of those things where I I definitely agree with you. You know, there are some men out there. There are definitely some men out there who who just want sex and and that's all they care about. Um, but I there's definitely another uh, and the majority of men who are out there that are that are looking for something deeper. And and um, there, there's definitely a lot that you can do in order to help kind of bring that out in a man. And and so I'm. Um, uh, yeah, it's that's that's awesome, and and thanks for thanks for being here, and and can you talk a little bit about how you became an intimacy expert? Yeah, there's a there's a course at Columbia University where I went, and I know <laughs> I wish I um I, I didn't set out to be an intimacy expert. I, I went to Columbia University in New York City for art history, um, and I was just being like the the smart girl, um, and yet I I went through two divorces, and the only one in common was me. And so I'm like, okay, what can I do different here? And I began to take a lot of courses, but then I started to be asked to be the coach or the head coach of all these different programs. I really had this sort of capacity to coach, but more than that, a capacity to make people feel safe and not judged and be able to go and look at those blocks that we can't, um, we can't heal on our own. Um, Excuse me, I'm sure a lot of the women on your program are smart, successful women, and they can probably handle 9 to 9.5 out of 10 things on their own. But nobody can find their own blind spot, nor can I. And so it really takes um, a very intuitive, safe, non-judgmental, unconditionally loving person to be able to kindly, tenderly, and potently show them something that's in the way and most of the time these issues at least the ones I deal with have to do with shame a closed heart from betrayal or abandonment something really owie um, uh, that, that's happened from a parent from a past lover or husband something where you've been made wrong for your body or your sexuality something where you think your natural erotic state is somehow dirty bad or wrong and a lot of shame has happened and shutting down and those tend to be the clients that I have that want to be free in their sensuality and yet they want it to also have a flavor of sacredness and that seems to be my my niche with women and uh, and it's beautiful to help them be free in their sacred eroticism and also learn how to navigate and manage men's attention so that they still are honored safe they can be discerning connected to their intuition so they can they can trust a good man and open their heart all the way to be splayed wide open and ravished uh, and claimed 
to the core the way I believe most women desire. Yeah, and, well, and that that sounds really exciting. <laughs> um, can, <laughs> can can you uh, so so? There's a lot of different terms out there, you know, sensuality, sexuality, intimacy. Can you can you explain a little bit about what intimate intimacy is exactly, and how that relates to sexiness? Sure, sure. I think there's a lot of definitions out there. I'll just give you mine. <laughs> so I like intimacy. Into me, I see. When you go inside, are you in denial? avoiding, judging, making wrong different parts of you or have you come to peace? Are you home? Are you free inside your heart at rest? Not needing to prove or be good enough or manipulate the situation to be safe. It's really a sense of presence and centeredness and freedom within your heart and within your, your pelvis, within your body, within your you know sensual creative center. If we go on to a few other words, sensuality, senses, it's um, your ability to really drink in what it is to be alive, feel. A lot of women live from the chin up. It hurts, frankly, to be in their heart. And so they're very analytical. They might like look sexy on the outside, but they don't embody it. And so that sensuality sort of escapes them. And they might get a first date, but they're not going to get a second or third date. Or they might just be used for their body or arm, arm candy. Sexuality is an interesting word to go a little deeper into because we could just think of that sexual energy just for genital copulation, right? But I like to think of sexual energy as life force energy. And the first time this happened to me when I realized it was more than just for the bedroom, I, ha I have a boy, he's 12, and I was he was like maybe two years old, and I was looking at him, and the, the sun was coming through the window and it was illuminating his eyelashes and the little bangs on his hair and I had this feeling of being turned on and I thought oh, well that's inappropriate that's my son I'd never experienced being turned on in life other than in the bedroom and as I began to explore what in the world was going on with me I realized that sexual energy is life force energy it has on the one spectrum a very healing tender caring nurturing quality to it and as it expands in its dimension it becomes very creative and generative and expansive which could be very useful in business um, or thinking of a new vacation for the kids or I mean it could be thought of as like a very businessy creative energy but it's alive and you're and you're vibrant and you're radiant and then as it expands even more it can move into the orgasmic and um, erotic and naughty and kinky and all those kind of energies as well which are obviously for the bedroom but I think a lot of women only have their sexual energy this much so they have the experience of being exhausted cut off empty crunchy um, and, and overwhelmed because they're only allowing this life force energy to co-create with them help them revitalize them like a small percentage of the time but if they could expand their understanding of sexual energy to let it be everything from caring for the children caring for themselves listening to a friend showing up at work and being creative writing their next book as well as when they get dressed into their lingerie and they go out on a date and they they flirt and appreciate a man all the way to being fully expressed in the bedroom if they could have this be their life their whole life could be radiance itself and aliveness itself and it's not possible if the heart is shut down and it's not possible if there's shame in the pelvis because it's an embodiment of energy, not an analytical idea. It's a true embodiment. Yeah, and so that's that's really interesting that you say that, and, and uh, th thanks a lot for that. So the idea of shame and, and the idea of having your heart closed down, and, and um, you know, a lot of that uh, sometimes has, has to do with different things that have happened in the past and different types of trauma and, and situations that have that have closed the heart down and, and created this feeling of shame. Um, can you talk a little bit about how a woman can kind of get over that whole issue of her past trauma so that th it doesn't prevent her from opening herself up and being more vulnerable and connecting more with her with her sensuality and her sexuality and her intimacy? Um, yeah. Go ahead. 
<laughs> sure, sure. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a woman on the planet who hasn't been hurt, betrayed, used, something. You, you don't get out of life um, scot-free. You just don't. It's part of our growth. It's part of our evolution. On some level, we could even say it was meant to happen so that something in her could emerge, a new confidence, a new strength, a new humility, a new compassion, something. Um, these, these events don't happen because she's done anything wrong or she's bad. However, a closed heart will not attract a noble man. Um, and a closed pelvis will not have an intuition turned on. So you won't see a bad man coming or an unkind man coming. You won't have a sense of the red flags because your instincts are off, they're shut down. So the, the how is not, um, is not a quick fix. It's not a, a pill you take. It's, it's a willingness to do the work, sit in the fire, and feel. And I suppose if you go to a, um, a cave and sit there for 10, 20 years, you could probably process all of this on your own. But I think that's very inefficient. I think it's the, the, the magic of partnership with a coach like yourself or a coach like me is, is you can't be the banks of the river and the river at the same time. You know, choose. And when there are deep places of pain, what's required is surrender. What's required is letting go. What's required is sitting in the fire with a trained professional, safe, unconditionally loving, non-judgmental professional, so that you can literally feel through, process through, and underneath, once you process through the feelings, there's a nugget in there, a gem. There's some wisdom, literal energy that wants to come out and be you. Like I said before, strength, compassion, softness, boldness, whatever that pain was inviting you to embrace in yourself, that is what, sh what a coach, a therapist, a mentor holds space for. So that's the how. The how is courageously, with humility, ask for help. It's what strong, smart women do. They don't do it all themselves. If we think about a queen, and she has her whole queendom, she's not going to do everything herself. She's not going to go train the horses and, and buff up the armor and, and help the kids and go cook in the kitchen and talk to the legislature. She can't do it all. If she tries, she will fail. So what's important if, if these women are thinking of themselves like a queen and they recognize there's a, a wound in their heart or they're shut down in their, in their pelvis, in their sexuality or sensuality, they've been betrayed, is to think like a queen and to bring a team of advisors into her world so that she can heal efficiently, effectively, tenderly, safely, so that she can, she can live and, and create the, the best life for herself with relationships. So the how comes down to par partnering with someone masterful to sit in the fire and heal it. And know that that doesn't mean you're broken or wrong. That's important as well. Yeah, no, and, and, and I totally agree, and, and I, I love that you brought that up because it's uh, part, part of my journey, actually, and, and um, I, I used to, back when I was a men's dating coach, when I was first a men's dating coach, I was kind of in the whole, like, gamey, you know, like, how to manipulate type uh, space, and one of the things that I found was that I was just attracting all of these women into my life that were uh, really not who I wanted. And I, part of what I found out, I went on a long, long journey for myself, and, and I actually did kind of a, a lot of, well, I, I didn't go sit in a cave or anything, but I, I spent, uh, I joined a, a Zen temple, and I spent literally years meditating until my first transformational experience actually occurred when I, when I first kind of got in touch and faced a lot of the demons that I had in my heart that were preventing me from opening up to true intimacy, that were preventing me from attracting people that were really awesome into my life. And, and then what I found after that, uh, after going on a, another search after that, was that... Um, that, that you don't need to sit and meditate for years in order to do that. Uh, you can actually find people that, that have gone through those experiences, that have different processes that, that you can go through to help you heal, to help you open up, to help you find where those blocks are that, that you don't really know where they are. And, um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because uh, that, that's a very, very important point. Um, so how about... Uh, intimacy with men is is it what it, what if you have say you're seeing a man and 
and you want to get more intimate with him and, and maybe there's some resistance there. Do you have any tips on, on how to kind of break through that and, and get more in touch with him? I've got a couple tips for you, um, for the ladies, but first I want to I really honor you for the journey you've been on to, to go and sit in your own fire and to face those demons. Um, I believe in, well, it's science. Quantum physicists tell us that 99.9% .9 of the world is unseen and only 0.01 is what we see. And so when you sit with a, a, a trainer, a coach like myself or yourself, there's literally an energy that people can entrain into without doing anything. It's a vibration that they align with and it allows for healing to be spontaneous, quicker, more effective and lasting. So I really honor the work that you've done and I can't believe you look so young. I believe that you've been doing this for a long time. I'm like, I look twice your age and I've definitely been doing this for a long time. But, um, but it pays off and it's sure fulfilling to help other people be free. So, um, so back to wanting more intimacy with gentlemen. First, I would always go inside first. This is my order. Into me, I see. And then once you're there, I believe that's where we connect with source, God, the universe, this oneness that we've been seeking with him this whole time, we find within ourself. It's like a click that occurs and all neediness, um, needing to prove yourself, concern if he texted you back or not. You know, all those things, they, they don't matter anymore because you're home inside. And instead of going towards him with that neediness, which actually pushes him away, you instead are so at rest, so in your body, you become this invitational vortex for him to come even closer to you. So intimacy becomes kind of normal, natural. It's just how it goes down because of how you're being so at home in your body and invitational. And when you don't need him to be a certain way, you're not looking for how he could hurt you. You're not focusing on what he didn't do. You're being far more playful, far more the temptress, far more courageous to ask for what you desire, and far, far more appreciative of catching him in the act of doing things that really turn you on. So one tip is simply to, well, the first tip is to do the deep work. I know that isn't the easy way, but it's the for long-term joy, happiness, and bliss, it's, it's the most efficient use of your time, energy, and money, I promise you. So that's step one. Step two, when you're being her, um, and you can't do this as you've learned from being a coach of men with the player, you can't intellectually pick up a woman of quality. She gets it. She senses it. She can smell a rat. Well, men are very intuitive creatures, too. They can smell it if you're just saying something nicey nice to manipulate him, he'll he'll say, what do you want? <laughs> he'll get it, so it has to be authentic. But just start to tell him what turns you on. Start to tell him what makes you happy. Start to appreciate him. It makes me so juicy when you X, Y, Z. Hmm, I bet you he'll start listening and doing a little more of that. Oh my God, it makes me so alive when you do X, Y, and Z. Oh, okay, I'll do that again. It's really pretty simple. Just set him up to win and praise him and let him see your joy in not just your words from the chin up but in your shoulders in your like your breath like let him see what it is for a woman to be alive and turned on and he will want to do more of that and in terms of more intimacy and we can define that as a as a vulnerable honest intimate i guess that word's already there, um, trusting conversation, perhaps about things that you might have in the past been nervous or embarrassed um, or judgmental about. Um, a a three-part a three question um, series that you can, you can do with your partner, and you can do it totally face-to-face, -to -face, light a candle, really like an exercise. You can do it side-to-side -side as you're driving someplace, so it's not quite so much... Uh, pressure. You could do it out for dinner. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it and the only rule is you don't get to comment, you just get to say thank you. So this isn't about agreement. This is just about understanding and listening. And the first question is, tell me something you like about me. And you go back and forth, just one thing. So let's practice, Matthew. Matthew, tell me something you like about me. I like your... I like your just your your energy and and how you uh, in in your awesome shirt. That shirt is really really nice. And uh, oh wait, we we're only supposed to say one thing. Okay. <laughs> so, so then my job is to say thank you, Matthew. And then you would say, tell me something you like about me. And then I would say, I think you're totally handsome. I had no idea you did the deep work um, inside, which I so honor about 
about you because I know that takes great courage. And I know those are two things, but I, I, I cheated too. I said two things that I liked about you. So that's the first question. And what it does is it builds affinity um, between two people. So maybe you appreciate your guy, but you just haven't really told him lately. Like even last night at dinner, my girlfriend's get this. Her husband of 20 years makes her coffee every morning. 365 times 20 years he's made her coffee. So she kind of stopped saying thank you about 15 years ago. But recently he's like, how's that coffee? And she's like, the coffee is great. The coffee is always great. Well, that's not what he wanted to hear. So she took a beat and she's like, the coffee is, when I go away on vacation and they don't make coffee like you make coffee, I don't even want the coffee. Your coffee is the best coffee. And he was like, thank you for the coffee comment. So anyways, um, what you like about your partner is important. Second question is, um, tell me something you think we align on. Sometimes you, we think we're on opposite teams and that we have to fight each other or make each other agree or manipulate each other. But if we're on the same team, that's not required. So Matthew, tell me something you think we align on. I think we align on wanting to... Um, wanting to get to kind of the core essence of, of what's going on to uh, help women really um, uh, feel better about themselves and, and uh, you know, create deeper relationships with men. Mm, thank you. So I would say thank you, not that I agree, but that I heard you. I happen to agree, but um, I'm just saying it that way. So then you, if this was the dialogue, you would then say, Alana, tell me something that you think we align on. And I would say, I think we align on walking our talk. You sound like a man that does his inner work himself and provides that for others. And I'm somebody certainly that can't see my own blind spots. Um, I can see yours or someone else's, but not mine. So I'm willing to do my work um, as well. And then you would say, thank you. Um, and so here's the last um, thank question. You. Um, and so here's the last question that you would use to build more intimacy with your partner. And um, after those first two, the third would be, tell me something you want me to know. Or it could be something like, tell me something you think I don't understand. Or it could be, tell me something about you and oral sex. You could go right sexy. You could be out at a really sexy restaurant and you could go straight for that. Tell me something about you and your sexual fantasies. It could be something more heartfelt, like tell me something about you and losing your parents. Tell me something about you and, and money. Tell me something, I mean, it could be anything. But if you keep this practice going with your partner where you create a safe space to talk about more intimate things, and you maybe put a time limit of like 30 minutes on this little exercise, you'll find that if the other person only says thank you, they don't get to say, well, why did you say that? Because last week, blah, blah, blah. You don't get to do that. You just get to listen impeccably with honor and say thank you. That, excuse me, creates safety in the relationship. So it's safe to be vulnerable. That When you're vulnerable, you're going to be honored. And that is so delicious for couples. You could even do it like after having sex and you're in that spooning, snuggling place and tell me something you've always wanted to tell me. Or tell me something you've never told anybody. And all you say to each other is thank you. It's exquisite. Wow, that, that was outstanding. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, so there's a lot of women in our community who are, who are really shy. And, and so um, what could a woman do if she's kind of embarrassed or shy or uh, something like that in order to feel more confident in bringing up conversations like this with, with a man? Well, actually, somebody the other day just signed up for some sessions with me who had this exact same issue, and I say start practicing in an environment where you're guaranteed to win. It's totally safe doing this with me, and we go through all of these intimate conversations in a way that she recognizes she's not going to die. She's on the playing field showing up vulnerably and being honored. So that part of her brain that's like, I can't do this. It, no, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You just did. So that's part one. Part two, the part of her that's shy is the part of her that doesn't believe 100% she's of worth as she is. It's the part of her that's outside going, am I enough? Do you approve of me? Am, am, is it going to be okay if I'm myself? So that part of her is defining her worth from the outside in, not the inside out. So that's the deep inner work to do with a coach like yourself or me so that that shyness dissolves into like a calmness 
She doesn't have to be an extrovert if she's not an extrovert, but shyness is saying that other people's opinions of her are more important than her own. And that means there's inner work with her little girl inside or her wounded heart that needs to be healed. And when it is, she might not become the most boisterous woman out there, but she'll have a calm confidence about her and it will be natural and organic for her, her personality and her soul. Mm. So there's, how about when like a woman's feeling jealous or she's having some type of negative emotions going on around around her man and let's say like her, the, the man she's with is, is like looking at another woman. Um, how can a woman kind of feel sexy when, when things like that are going on? Well, I, she can carry a gun in her, no, I'm just joking, totally just joking. <laughs> That's so funny, isn't it? But it's what we want to do. Um, okay, so first off, don't make yourself wrong that you're jealous. You're probably accurate that he's looking at another work of art. And let's look at that. He, he's looking at, and hear my words, another work of art. Women, we are works of art. We want to be looked at. We love it. It's, it feels good to be seen and adored and appreciated. Same with guys. They're no different. They might be a little quieter about it, but they love, you know, that we see their biceps and all, and we see their new car or whatever it is, right? So first off, don't, it's not, he's not a bad person because he's looking at another work of art. And if you, you have two choices, you can shut your heart down or you can keep your heart open. Your choice. No one's making you choose. You are. And so when you look at another woman, what do you say about yourself? I'm not enough. He'll probably cheat on me, just like the other guys. Well, notice where that train of thought came from. Go heal it. Go do some inner work with your coach and heal it because you're going to be right about it. If you think about that long enough, your behavior with him, maybe you'll withhold sex that night. Maybe you'll be a little snarky with him. Sooner or later, look at that. He had an affair. Look at that. He broke up with you for her. You created it yourself based on how you respond. No, probably reacted is a better word. How you reacted to that moment. You could choose instead as he looks at this beautiful work of art going by. Notice that. Get into a bit of your coy temptress. Lean a little forward. Maybe move your boobs up a little more as you lean in to see him and go, she was pretty hot, wasn't she? And he's like, oh, he's busted, right? But he's not made wrong. He's not made wrong. And um, and like, oh, you're a bad boy. You're still going to get in trouble tonight, right? Like, so you 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 see it. You acknowledge it. But you embrace it. You go with it. Um, and, and a man that sees a woman who can be real and confident and coy in the face of that, and you can't you can't pretend that. You got to mean it. And the underneath work to really meaning it and being able to do that with your with your man is is a sense of worthiness within yourself. That yes, there are always going to be women more beautiful than you. There will. And there will always be women probably less beautiful than you. It's just part of life. And if you want your whole life to be a comparison thing, you will be afraid and insecure the rest of your life. You need to start healing that inner place where you know that you are all that is without even trying, sexy exactly as you are, and own that, and come what may, circumstances on the outside, you're okay, and thus you will choose a man that's, that believes that too, and sees that too, and that's that inner confidence work that if you don't do it, you're just going to keep being hurt, um, and lastly, lastly, I would say, maybe, a lot of women get very comfortable in a couple of their personas, Maybe, maybe you do cute really well, or you do smart really well, or you do naughty really well, but you sort of don't do all the flavors. And there goes somebody, a woman walking by, and she's got soft down. And you're not very soft. You might be naughty, or even like dorky, or like whatever, okay? But you, you don't have that one. And he's looking at that, that quality that you're not. Now, that doesn't mean you're not enough, because every woman has all the flavors of the feminine inside her. So you could, as you go to bed that night, notice what was it about her that caught his eye? And how can I cultivate that within me? Not to keep my guy because I'm so scared and insecure. No, to do it because I choose to be the fullness of the feminine myself for my own joy and for my own fulfill fulfillment, which will also, his eyes won't stray so much because he'll be able to see it in you and enjoy it within you. And it will um, improve your relationship. 
Mm. Yeah, that that was really powerful. And you know, I just want to take a second and just you know thank you for uh, you know one of the things that. I notice that you do a lot of is talk about a lot of things that a lot of women are kind of feel ashamed about and embarrassed about and, and this is really really important powerful work and so I just think it's it's awesome and thank you for for doing that um, one of the things that I'd like to kind of switch the topic over to is is the the idea of orgasms and, and I know that this is another thing that a lot of women are embarrassed uh, to talk about but um, some women don't experience orgasms. Some women don't really know how to control when they experience orgasms, or you know, there's kind of this. Um, <clears throat> I've noticed that some women have this kind of goal set mindset going on about about reaching orgasm. You know, how how can a woman experience an orgasm? Like, what what does it take to to experience and feel that? Mm. So I'm not a sexologist, and I have a lot of wonderful sexologist um, colleagues to refer you to if it's like um, like a biological um, thing. Um, however, on an emotional level, I can I can help you. My experience with orgasms and with my clients is they're very connected to your capacity to feel safe in your body, safe on the planet, and your capacity to surrender to the unknown. A lot of women that have been hurt in the past, or men for that matter, excuse me, live from the head up, strategizing, how can I be safe? Really, that's all that life has become. How can I be in control and never be hurt again and be safe? And as a result, they don't have a connection in their body. And orgasms don't occur in the mind. It's, it's way down here. <laughs> so you, you need to be able to go down and heal the fear and find that safety and a sense of control, not of the world, but of your capacity to respond to the world, and also that connection to to God, to source, to knowing, to discernment, to awareness of, of like, come what may, I know how to respond, I can be safe. When all that inner work is done and you can surrender to the sunshine, surrender to going out on a date and not knowing what's going to happen, surrender to the day, I mean... I remember back when I was 16 and my friend was about to come over and visit me and they died. I'm like, what? I didn't think that could happen in life. So that sense of like everything's okay in life, you know, we get blindsided in a lot of different ways and we go whoop and live from here up. But the key is in the place of pain, can we keep our heart open? And if we shut it down for a decade or two or three, opening it up again and feeling through that with a coach like myself or, or you, and they can process that through and release decades of stuffed fear, it'll leave and you'll have this sense of eternal safety, eternal oneness. And, and that capacity is absolutely required to let go and have an orgasm. When that energy builds, when you're out of control, that's how an orgasm happens. It's not a strategic step-by-step -step plan in your mind. It doesn't work like that. Orgasms are not goal-oriented. If Quite often, if the harder you try, the less they'll happen. So it's the complete opposite to what a lot of women have as their skill set. Focus, goal, work hard, result. It's not that way. It's the opposite. It's let go. Be out of control. Surrender. Allow. Receive. And it can be terrifying. And so the inner work that I do with women to heal those wounds inside allows them to have an experience of, of safety. And then the next one would be playfulness. Like go outside and say, okay, life, have your way with me today. I dare you. Or go for a walk in nature like the beautiful forest behind your head and just say, nature, penetrate me. I mean, you're not going to get in much trouble having the nature penetrate you because it's beautiful and it's amazing. But you start to practice receiving, honoring penetration so that by the time you choose a partner that honors you, your body's ready, your heart is ready, things have been cleared away, and you can enjoy the unknown and go from inorgasmic to orgasmic or orgasmic to multiple orgasms or non-ejaculatory to ejaculatory. There's so many wonderful places of bliss and pleasure to explore and yet you first need to do the healing work like, like anything in life. It's not going to be from here up. That's a short-term strategy of survival. The thriving and the pleasure is found when you heal deep within your body and receive all that's waiting for you. 
Hmm. So, what about? How about when, if you want to, kind of talk to a man about what turns you on more? Um, do Do you have any specific tips about about how to approach that conversation in a way that that doesn't seem awkward or strange or weird? Yeah, I call it the sandwich, and it's praising him for something that he does well already. Like I said before, oh, it turns me on so much, or it makes me really uh, wet when, or makes me juicy when. So set him up to win of what you want more of, and then put the other side of the sandwich on. I'm just so lucky that I have the most amazing boyfriend in the world. So, for example, um, you, in the actual lovemaking moment, you can say, oh, I just really love it when you when you touch my arm. Um, what would make me so happy is if you touched it 1,000 times slower while looking at me in my eyes. Ah, oh, you are the most incredible man I've ever met. That would be an incredible. And you can use that template for anything that you want. Note that if you um, get curt or crunchy or judgmental and go, oh, don't do that or stop that or I hate when you do that, he's going to go, Whoosh. Um, and the, the intimacy, the connection is gone, and uh, he, he's going to be more timid in trying new things, and there's always going to be sort of something in the space there, so it takes great courage when you're vulnerable and open and out of control to be kind and to be tender and um, invitational. Uh, it takes practice, but, but the, the, the outcome is so worth it. If you could just take a beat... Hear my voice going, sandwich girl, do the sandwich. And you're like, okay, <laughs> say something kind because he wants to please you. And, and every woman is different. And every woman is different during different times of the month. So there's no proper way to do it. Even if you got it right on Thursday, next Thursday, her body's different. She's in a different part of her cycle. It's probably not going to work. Or she had something go bad at work that day. Or, you know, we're, we're different all the time. So for him, I always coach him to see women as a mystery and that you never know how to do it and to be very aware and ask her questions. And, and then for the ladies, I say be verbal. Be verbal in your moans. Be verbal in the way you express in your body what works for you and praise, praise, praise. Um, and then even the next day, um, you can text him or say something like, remember last night when you did such and such? <sighs> and just walk away. He'd be like, okay, okay, note to self. All right, she likes that. <laughs> So there's, a, there's just a, a plethora of ways to, to praise him to do what you want. You just have to have the courage to start talking about it. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So th do you have anything for uh, how to turn a man on or how to figure out what a man likes? I mean, I was just going to say, you. He just likes you. I mean, like, <laughs> that's pretty simple. Um, most of my male clients say, I love, I'm so turned on by a confident woman. And what they don't mean is, yes, I'm very accomplished from my chin up, but I'm very smart, and I have the, that's not what they mean. They mean a woman whose heart is all the wide way open, and she's still, she's vulnerable, but she still dares you. Like, that's the kind of confidence they mean, like comfort in her skin, comfort in her body, comfort in the unknown, comfort in the mystery, to still, from fullness, say, I dare you. Right? That's really what turns guys on. So there's no um, tips or techniques or what to wear or what to say. It's more about cultivating that sense with yourself. Um, and just and that's just joyful to be that way as a woman. And you can get everyone to take your guard. Your, like I have these guys always want to take my garbage out. I don't know why, but they're just like I praise them so much. I tell them how much it makes me happy. And I've always got someone doing that for me. I've always got people carrying my groceries for me because like I'm this radiant woman with all this love and juiciness to gush on people authentically. And and guys are just happy to receive that. They don't get a lot of that in the world. So just just be juicy and grateful and appreciative. And authentic about it. Do your inner work so it can be authentic. And don't hold back. Like love being a woman and love showering that on your on your man. And even though he's like, oh, don't say that. That embarrasses me. Say it. Say his biceps are hot in front of his friends. Like just be 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 a goofball. Um, be your sensual self. Be free. Be authentically free. And that for your guy, for a guy that's a great match for you. 
that's going to turn him on. And if it doesn't, he's not your match. Let him go. Bless you, release you, move on. Because for every every pot, there is a lid, right? So um, keep showing up, even if you've had a string of losers. Don't give up. Don't give up. You're just being trained. You're just being trained to keep that heart open, and then boom, you're being yourself, and there he is. And you're like, oh, I'm so glad I did all that work. I'm so glad I did those coaching courses. I'm so glad I did that inner work. I, I'm, I get to be with my beloved. You know, let yourself have that. Keep going. Awesome. So I, I knew this interview. You. Um, did, so you said that you have a gift that you wanted to share with with our community. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? Sure, sure. It's a series of six audios. It's actually three for women and three for men. But I want you to, ladies, download the men ones as well because the more you understand about how guys work, um, the more you can have an edge above women who don't. So there's some good insights into the, the men ones as well. And the three for women, I'll just talk about one, and it tends to be the, the most difficult one. As, excuse me, we age as women. We feel less worthy, less beautiful, less valued than somebody 20 years younger. So this particular audio is about how to feel sexy as you age, like a fine wine, like those leather couches that have been sat on for years and years. And it's just like, oh, yeah. You've got to be able to let go of any beliefs that as you get older, you're somehow less of value and shift that one on its ass and really own your grandeur and your beauty and your um, lusciousness as you grow older. So that's just one of the three. Um, all of them are basically about turning any beliefs or myths on their head so you can embrace a new way of thinking, a new point of view, a new way of being so that you can more effortlessly attract the love and attention you deserve being exactly who you are. And you'll give them the link to that. Yeah, there's, there's, so there's a link underneath this video right here. You can go and, and uh, download that um, whenever you'd like. And so uh, th thanks a lot, Alana. For being here and and doing this, it's it's been a treat, and, and I love everything that you have to say, and it's great, great advice. Um, so if if you're watching this, that you should listen and do exactly what she said. So, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> thanks again for being here, and uh, I really appreciate all your advice. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. And one thing I just feel inspired to share, if it's okay with you, Matthew. Um, Sometimes you find a mentor and it's Matthew and you know it and you sign up because you've been waiting all your life to find that perfect teacher. Maybe that perfect teacher is me. And so what I'd like you to do is tell me that Matthew sent me. Send me an email. Matthew sent me. And send it to my manager, which is manager at alanapratt.com, A-L-L-A-N-A-P-R-A-T-T.com. So I know that Matthew sent me. And normally my strategy sessions are $597, but if there's one of you out there, the first lady to email me that goes, you know what, this lady resonates with me, I want to explore more with her, then I would love to meet you. But I want to know that you came from Matthew, so just say Matthew sent me, and let's connect absolutely for free. Thank you who has this video and I hope you've learned some really awesome insights into yourself and, and how you can connect with men. and and lasting love that you want in your life. So thanks a lot, and I'll speak with you again soon. Mwah.